of the Indians with Times River South winning the state championship. In 1979, it was the year of the Mariners with Times River North winning a state championship. And 1981, so far, has been the year of the Raiders of Times River East High School. Hi, everyone. I'm Ken Turk. With me, Bob Stranger. We're at uh, Times River East High School for their Thanksgiving Day game with the Mustangs of Brick Memorial High School. And, of course, I say this is the year of the Raiders because they're on their way to the state championship South Jersey Group 4, they will play for that championship one week from today. It's been the most successful season for Times River East. Of course, they come into this game with an 8-1 and one record, and of course, they're only in their third year of football under George Jack, the former assistant to Warren Wolf at Brick Township High School. And Bob, uh, we've seen quite a bit of uh, Times River East this year, and uh, everybody I've been talking to this week about East, uh, we all seem to agree they've come a long way since that loss to Brick Township over at Brick uh, in about the middle of the season when they lost a really tough uh, game. It was a very hard-fought game, but uh, no doubt about it, George has brought this club along very nicely. Well, first of all, we should uh, give our congratulations to Coach Jack. He's done a great job bringing this team along. It's funny because in the loss to Brick Township, this team seemed to find something. Out of the ashes of that loss, they put together some confidence, and they've put together a, a, an offense. They were always a strong defensive team. And uh, now every week as the season's progressed offensively, they've gotten tougher and tougher and tougher. We've seen uh, quarterback Scott throw bombs uh, to people like McKelvey. And we've seen Chris uh, Schiavo and uh, Sal Shirella and, and the rest of the offensive people really come alive. They're now not only a very tough defensively, they are an awesome power offensively. They've gained a lot of confidence and are really a team to be reckoned with. Why don't you bring out the point you were just telling me when we first came down here as the East team came on to warm up. We were talking to the coaches, and, and you thought it was really great the way the enthusiasm here and the way they make you feel part of it. Well, uh, what's happened here is this is the first, uh, I guess, the, the only team that we really cover where we have felt uh, as we are part of the team. We have access to the locker room, to the coaches' offices, on the field. Uh, the kids are loose and relaxed around us. The coaches welcome us. They're very open with us when somebody's hurt and in terms of their game plan. They really make us feel welcome. And uh, on our behalf, I hope the Raiders go all the way. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, key players to watch, you mentioned some of them. And, uh, of course, uh, I talked about earlier in the season a little bit of a problem br uh, bringing in the new quarterback. He's only a junior, Joe Scott, but I made the mention when we did the telecast of the first round playoff game with East beating Southern, I thought that he played one of his more consistent games and that that's been a key that he's been developing along the way. Well, Scott's been able to uh, throw the bomb. We saw him earlier in the year and he was passing short to medium ranges. But lately, off the play action pass, since they've been able to run the ball inside and been able to pick up big yardage on first down, that's given that East the short yardage situation on second down and Scott's been able to deliver that 40 and 50 yard bomb. He did it quite successfully against Southern last week. He hit two of them and almost had a third one. The wind held it up for, or he would have had three touchdown passes in one game. Bob, you had a couple of really great defensive teams up at Red Bank High School and I think you have to uh, like this Tom's River East 4-4 defense. Oh, they're tremendous. Uh, originally when I started coaching, there were only two teams in the shore running the 4-4, us at Red Bank and uh, Ronnie Signorino at Tom's River South. But now the four is caught on and is the defense in Ocean County, and nobody runs it better than, Tom, than here at Tom's River East. They have some great linebacking, and they have a real tough front four. It's interesting you mentioned that, and Ron Signorino being one of the pioneers, that uh, now his first year at Brick, and uh, Warren Wolf uh, let him put in the 4-4 defense. And uh, for well, as long as I remember, since the beginning of Brick football, they always ran the 5-2, a lot of monster defense. And it shows you that the, the confidence and these coaches that have had success with it, uh, Warren believes, hey, Ron knows what he's doing, let's let's go with it. Yeah, in that situation, you have a, a great coach in Coach Wolf who recognizes that he's got another coach who's a superior coach, probably one of the best coaches in the history of the shore, if not the greatest. And uh, it shows great confidence in Coach Wolf that he'll change something that he's done his whole career and say to Ron Signorino, okay, Ron, the defense is yours, run it like you own it. And uh, by the same token, in doing that, it allows Coach Wolf to concentrate on the offense, and uh, it's shown because Brick has become a big play offense for the first time in many years this year. Now, Brick Memorial has very quietly uh, come along this year. They haven't really gotten the publicity. They, they started off with that win in the second game of the year over Central Regional, the first win in the school's history, of course, last year. In their first year of football, they went winless. And, of course, they did have all kinds of problems. The school was not open in time. They were going double sessions at Brick Township High School. 
The team was practicing very late at night after the Brick Green Dragons would get done with the field. It had to be a mess for Donnie Reed at Brick Memorial. This year, they're in their own school building. They got their own field, and uh, things have changed. And Donnie, uh, of course, was very happy, as he should be, with their most recent game of victory over Al Saner and Point Pleasant Borough. That had to re really be something. And this team is now 4-4 four and four as they come into today's game. They've got a lot of incentive because they want to go 5-4. and four. And, of course, if they can knock off a team on their way to the playoffs, that's got to be something to talk about over in Brick Township. Of course, all the talk is about the Dragons going against Millville. That would steal a little bit of the thunder and give the other half of the town something really big to celebrate over this weekend. So Donnie Reed and his team is a very dangerous club coming in here, and they've got Toms over East and the position they like to have them in, where East has come off that big win over Southern, a very emotional game last week in the first round of the playoffs, and uh, possibly could be looking ahead to next week, and Donnie Reed's got to be very happy with the way uh, his team's coming in here. He's got everything to gain out of this, and uh, it's going to be, I think, an interesting ball game. If you wanted to play East, if I had to play East, the game I would pick to play them in is this one. They just came off an emotional high and a tremendous victory over Southern. They know that they have the state playoffs coming up, and they're looking for that rematch with Brick. Uh, it's tough because East can come in here only looking at the game matter factually, and for uh, Brick Memorial, they come in here, and uh, it's uh, a step right into the penthouse if they win. If they win this game, they can come in here playing real loose. They have everything to gain and nothing to lose. And if they win this game, it skyrockets them and makes their program kind of like uh, East program has turned around. Very quickly, I'll tell you who to watch for Brick Memorial. They have two quarterbacks. Duckworth, who we saw against Central Regional, a very strong runner and a decent arm. And they have another kid by the name of Shea, who will see some quarterback action today. They have a tailback by the name of Tippinaro, who carries the ball a lot. And the fullback who does the blocking is Munster. And uh, as far as their line, Pete Ramsey, we were very impressed by in that game early in the season over at Central Regional. He was our player of the game. And he dominated from that defensive tackle position. And uh, East is going to have to handle him if they want to run the ball. And you know George Jack likes to have a ground game and control that football. So we'll see what's going to happen. And uh, Bob and I will have the introduction of the players coming up next. Offensively and defensively for the Raiders at Times of East as they come into this ball game with eight victories and one defeat. Starting at split end for the Raiders, number 36, a 5'11", 185-pound senior, Bob Valeni. Also playing split end, number 82, 6'160", a senior, Don Petalunas. At left tackle on offense, number 76, 5'11", 230-pound senior, Terry Morris. And right next to Terry at left guard, 62, is 5'11", 190, a senior, Jim Martin. The offensive center. Also plays on the defensive line. 56 is his number, 6 foot 190. He's a senior, Chris Schultz. At right guard, also plays both ways for the Times of East Raiders. Number 66, 5'10", 215, a senior. And one of our players of the game this year, Chuck Sigler. At right tackle, number 77, three-year veteran, 6'1", 230 pounds, senior. Both ways, Jim Verderosa. And a tight end, also one of our former players of the game, number 87, a six foot, 388 pound junior, also plays defensive end, Jay McKelvey. And also playing tight end, number 86, five foot, 765 pounds, a junior, Adam Glantzman. The quarterback and our player of the game in the uh, playoff game last week was Southern Regional, is number eight, 5'11", 160 pound junior, Joe Scott. Also playing quarterback, number 11, Six foot one, 165 pounds, and a junior, John Sharaba. At halfback, number 24, and another one of our players of the game this year, five foot four, 150 pounds, senior, Vinnie Garrity. And here's another player of the game this year, number 28, a five foot 10, 170 pound, senior, Pat Slevin. At fullback, the player of the game in the win over Central Regional not too long ago, number 47, six foot two, 220 pound, senior, Chris Schiavo. At wingback, Number 21, 5'8", 150, a senior, scored the first touchdown last week on a pass from Joe Scott against Southern Regional, Sal Shirella. At running back, number 32, a 5'9", 150-pound junior, Bruce Russell. Also at running back, number 44, 5'5", 155-pound senior, Glenn Clark. On the defensive side, and here's a player that uh, really has been, I think, underrated, one of the top linebackers in the area, made a lot of open field tackles last week. 34 is 5'8", 165 pounds, a senior, Bob Chevrier. At right inside linebacker, 
Number 38, five foot nine, 175 pound junior, came in the lineup in the middle of the season, has really done a great job, Tony Infane. And a right outside linebacker, number seven, took over starting position early in the season, and I think he's done a super job, five foot eight, 150 pound junior, Mark Yatesy. And let's meet the coaches here for Tom's River East in this Thanksgiving Day ball game. They're gonna introduce themselves. Al Zalewski, linebacking coach. Have a good game, Al. Thank you. Okay. Joe Torella, defensive backs. Good luck, Joe. Thanks. Star Luca defensive line. And I hope I have another big game for your defense. I hope so. Good. Rick Despoto offensive line. Okay, Rick, good luck. Jack Bush, offensive ends. Jack, have a good game. Thank you. Mike Conlon, offensive backfield. Okay, Mike. And the head man himself, George Jack. George, you're going to go against a man today who you worked with for quite a few years over Brick Township, Don Reed. Yeah, Don, he's a fine coach, and I'm sure he wants this ball game very badly, and I can understand that. We were in a similar position last year, but you know, I just hope that our kids are up to the task. Bob, you have anything you want to ask of the coach today? Uh, just if coach has any plans uh, to change anything he's been doing or if he plans on playing the way he has been all year. Well, we're going to do the same things, I imagine. Um, we feel that we're a better football team, and if we change anything, you know, you do that when you're an underdog, not when, you're, when you think you're a better ball club. But we just have to play like we can play. George, uh, when you first came out to warm up, I was talking to Mike Collin. He says you, ha you had a good week of practice, and especially yesterday, he says he feels like the kids are really ready to play today. Yeah, I'm a crazy dude. You know, I give my kids off on holidays to be with their families, and sometimes it freshens them up. And I think when you take a step back and you do things like that, you realize that that's the way to go sometimes, and I hope it works out. Okay, George, good luck today. Have a good ball game. Thank you very much. Okay. That's the head man, George Jack. Bob, we're ready to go with today's game and uh, looking forward to it. Well, it should be a good one, Ken, and uh, I, I think the fans are really going to enjoy it. Okay, so that's it, and we'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. The New Jersey National Bank, along with the other participating sponsors, Carolina Furniture, Dunkin' Donuts of Bayville, Marita's Skier's Place, Luigi's Deli, Blair's Rental Service, the Berkeley Machine Shop, Danny's American, Gem Furniture, Service Star Hardware, Richards Motors South, and the House of Palling. We certainly hope you'll support our sponsors as they support high school football during the 1981 season. And the first quarter is coming your way by the New Jersey National Bank, along with Carolina Furniture, Dunkin' Donuts of Bayville, and Marita Skiers Place. Ken Turp here in the booth with Bob Stranger. We're just about ready to go. The captains for Tom's Reese are going to the center of the field. There's Coach George Jack. He wears a cowboy hat for the Thanksgiving Day game, and I was just talking to Dick Pistol. We're trying to find out if there's a story behind this. And I don't know whether it's the connection with playing the Mustangs and this is a going out west game, Bob, or what. But there's some kind of a story we'll have to find out about before next week. I don't know what it is, Ken, but I know Coach Jack loves his hats. He really believes in them, and he, he thinks they're good luck charms. And his kids get behind him. They support him. So whatever it takes to get your kids behind you and get you to win, good luck to him. Chris Schultz is out at the center of the field with his co-captain, Terry Morris, for Tom's River East. Bob, who are the officials? The officials for today's game at referee will be Frank Shikitano. The umpire will be Bob Nyman. The headlinesman will be Ray Pennett. The field judge will be Andy Fleming. And on working the clock will be Al Ditweiler. Tom's River East is going to receive the football. One of those captains for Brick Memorial is John Shea, the quarterback, number eight. And the other captain is number 80 seven and here we go with our problems with numbers because we have well, let me, we have no 87 on the brick memorial roster we're in for another one of those days bob i hope not it makes it very difficult and it's not fair to the kids and their families they, they get a few minutes to be seen on tv and we can't identify them properly so the raiders are huddling george jack has taken his cowboy hat off as he addresses his club in the center of that huddle there you see george with the black and blue scarf hours of times east the weather today, it's a uh, slightly overcast day. The temperature is probably in the high 30s or low 40s. The wind is blowing directly across the field from the west and should not be a major factor in the game. I said East comes into this uh, game with an 8-1 and one record and uh, Brick Memorial 4-4. Four and four. Brick Memorial is in the Class B this year. They will go up to Class A next year and meet Brick uh, Tom's River East in a conference game. This is a non-conference ball game. And uh, the most recent game was a 3 to nothing victory over Point Pleasant Borough. And uh, they've won two in a row. They beat Freehold Township the week before the Borough game, 13 to nothing. Tom's of East will drop two deep. Pat Slevin to the near side, number 28. Vinnie Garrity, number 24, to the far side to return this kickoff as 
Brick Memorial in their white, traveling white, gold pants, gold helmets, and green numbers. Their colors are green and gold. A little bit of green from the other brick school. And of course, Tom Zarese in their bad guy uniforms, all black with a silver a la the Oakland Raiders. It looks like a Green Bay Packer Oakland Raider game. And uh, Brick Memorial's kicker is Boyle, number 21. Danny Boyle, and he'll be playing some receiver today. Dan Boyle is a 6-173 pounder. He will do the kicking off, number 21. Coach Jack identified Boyle before the game as being one of the key players for Brick Memorial, and he felt that he had to be contained if uh, East was going to win today. A battle of the Warren Wolf disciples. Donnie Reed coached with George Jack on the Brick Township staff for quite a few years. These are old buddies. They live down the same area. They both came from the Berkeley Ocean Gate area where they live, and, and this is a friendship, but not a friendship as soon as that ball is in the air. And here we go with today's Thanksgiving Day football game. Far side of the field, number 38, Infante, Tony Infante, returns that kick and knocked out of bounds to the 30-yard line. The kick was shanked a little bit and didn't go very deep. Infante made the grab. There was no time for East to set up a return. He just took it straight ahead as he's coached to do. Be interesting to see what East's game plan is here early in the game. All right, East comes up to the line with Chris Schultz, the center, Jim Martin, Chuck Sigler, the guards, Terry Morris, Jim Verderosa, the tackles, Jay McKelvey, the tight end. Scott, the quarterback, pitches on the sweep, and it's going to be Schiavo, the fullback, just short of a first down at the 39-yard line. Coach Jack was saying prior to the game he expected Memorial to blitz a lot inside. So he was going to open the game with a sweep, and here you can see it's a very quick toss for a short sweep with the big fullback, Schiavo, taking it. Watch, you'll see out of the wing formation. you see the wing back, Sorella, come down and block, and Schiavo cuts behind two blockers and almost breaks it. Second and one. Split backfield. Scott wants to throw, and he is sacked. Coming in from the right side was number 23, Mark Gaspich, the right end. Mark Gaspich, a 5'11", 190-pound senior, and he's also a wrestler and a good one. People may wonder why on a second and one Coach Jack called a pass, but he saw something. Brick Memorial came up with a nine-man front. Had Scott been able to get the ball off, uh, it would have been real trouble because there are only two defenders back for Brick. But there was a safety blitz, and they got to Scott before he was able to pass the ball. Brick defense, Mark Gaspich, 190 pounds, the right end. Joe Marol, the right tackle, number 66, goes 208. The nose guard, Don Warren, 216 pounds. Draw, nowhere. And Brick Memorial wasn't fooled at all on a draw play. Number 40, Jeff Munster, the monster back, came up and made the stop. He's a sophomore, 5'9", 178 pounds. Fourth down, the Raiders will have to give up the football. Well, I line up for the kick cam. We might say that Brick Memorial comes into the game having, if there is, a psychological edge. For them, this is their season. For East, they have to win this ball game because they're going to the States. Here's the punt by Mark Yatesy. And it's going to roll, a good roll. Tom's over East roll. All the way down to the 31-yard line where the Raiders cover it. No return at all as that kick uh, took a good, strong Raider bounce. It's going to be interesting now to see if Brick Memorial can move the ball offensively against what has been a stingy Raider defense all year. All right, the offensive lineup for, for the uh, Mustangs will have Jeff Munster, the fullback, number 40, and Mark Tippinaro, 14, is the tailback, the quarterback, a senior, Bill Duckworth. He wears number seven. Mark DeStephanus is the slot back, number five. Quarterback Duckworth keeps it, and he can't get out of the backfield. The Raiders stacked it up, coming up quickly with Shirella, number 21, and McKelvey, 87, the, the end to make the stop. All right, we had a tight power eye formation, and the quarterback just sprinted out behind three blocking backs and tried to get to the corner, was unable to do it. Loss of about a yard and a half on the play. Caught second down and 11 for the Memorial Mustangs. The tight end for Brick is number 82, Joe Osborne. And the split end is 21, Dan Boyle, who kicked off to start this game. Again, Duckworth coming around the right side, same play. And this time, he gets a couple of yards, but Shirell came up once again. Number 21 to make the stop, and he had help. Number eight, Bob's Joe Scott, the safety man, was there too. 
earlier this year we saw Brick Memorial play and had a tendency in that game to repeat a play. They'd run it once and then come right back to it, either on the next play or shortly later. There again, they ran a power eye formation and came to the sideline with the same play. Well, they got four on a play, so third and seven for Memorial. Duckworth throws, had a man wide open all alone, and that was tipping arrow the tailback, but he was pressured. Out of the two split, uh, the two lead backs in the power eye formation, both backs did a flare out of the backfield, and a linebacker failed to pick up the back coming up uh, to the left side of the field. So Brick Memorial goes nowhere on their first series of plays, and they'll have to give up the football. And doing the punting will be Anthony Argandizia. He's a big lineman for Brick Memorial. Deep for East is Slevin uh, and Geardy. No rush. Going to go to Geardy's side, and Geardy's going to have to chase it. And it's going to go out of bounds around a 23-yard line. So the Raiders take over, first and 10. That was about a 45-yard punt, Kent. And I said Argandizi is going to punt. It was not Argandizi. It was Pete Ramsey, number 78. We, we saw Ramsey earlier in the year, Ken. He was an outstanding defensive ball player. He was our player of the game, Pete Ramsey, against Central Regional early in the season. He plays uh, tackle on defense. He is the left tackle, number 78, a 225-pound senior. And the left end is Ar Argandizia. He goes 190 pounds. Now they hit with Schiavo, the fullback, over the left tackle spot. Picks up a couple of yards. And will bring up a second. He actually got about three on the play, second and seven. Again, we saw Brick Memorial with an inverted secondary. That means they brought their two safeties up real close, almost in the linebacker positions, and they're playing the two corners back in regular pass defense. But they're leaving the middle of the field wide open. Shirella comes to the near side, covered by Duckworth, number seven. And no hole at all. Behind the blocking of Verderosa's side, and they couldn't move him out. And uh, Brick is hanging tough on defense. On the bottom of the stack is the nose man, Don Warren, a 5'5", 216-pound junior. What you're seeing, Kenny, is almost a nine-man front of Brick. They're playing their safeties up real tight, almost as linebackers. The monster man comes up, and I don't know if he's playing a tight end or not yet, but they're playing everybody up real close except the cornerbacks. Jeff Munster, number 40, is the monster man for Brick. He's a sophomore. Ray Rossi, 88, is the safety man. Herb Hume, 42, is the corner on this side for the Mustangs. Pitch, and wow, is that play stacked up very quickly by Ramsey, the man you were just talking about, Bob. And, and we had a great outside uh, pressure put on by number 87 for the uh, for Brick Memorial. And 87's a man we don't know who it is, Bob. That's no, a guy, and he put on tremendous outside pressure, and he was reading that pitch all the way. Brick Memorial is looking for a winning season. If they can win today, they are four and four coming in. Yatesy punts and fair catch by Duckworth. And it'll give the uh, Memorial Mustangs excellent field position at the 49 yard line of the Raiders. On the exchange of punts, the Mustangs gained about 25 yards. There's a lot of pressure that time as they went to try to block the kick. Had they blocked the kick, they had the ball in about the 20 yard line. When we get a timeout, Bob. We'll check with the PA announcer and see if he was informed as to who number 87 is. It's really a shame when you're not, you know, you don't get the information from the coaching staff on these number changes. Here's the quarterback rolling. This is Shea, the other quarterback, number eight. And he's knocked out of bounds around the 45, pick up about four yards. John Shea is a senior like Duckworth. They have two senior quarterbacks. Shea is a little taller. He's 6'1". Duckworth's 5'9". Duckworth a little heavier by five pounds. Getting back to the number situation, Ken, uh, it might be interesting to remind the fans that uh, we go down before game time and check with the coaches to try and avoid situations like that. I think sometimes the coaches aren't even aware. Uh, maybe the assistant coach changes the number. Here's a movement by number 23 in that backfield to jump the gun. And that'll be a illegal procedure penalty against the Mustangs. Mark Gaspich jumped too soon. First period action here at uh, Vincent Dvorak Field, Tom Zarese High School, 6.15 left. This is the Thanksgiving Day rivalry between Tom Zarese 
and Brick Memorial. And of course, uh, the game was moved two days past the date due to the playoffs. We're seeing this game on Saturday and not on Thanksgiving morning. And it is a morning game. They kept the starting time at 11 o'clock. Brick Memorial can't afford to make mistakes like the uh, procedure penalty there if they want to beat a team as talented as East. I think what we have to watch for here is that pass play that we saw earlier where no one picked up the back coming out of the backfield. Second and 11. Rolling out and being pressured by McKelvey is Duckworth. Jay McKelvey, who had that super game against Southern around Halloween time, really came charging through there and a stork made the sack. Now here you see the talent of, a, of an excellent coaching staff like Coach Jack has. Uh, they saw that they were beaten on that pass play earlier. They made a defensive adjustment. Here on a replay, you can see them try and run a pass play, but the great pressure by McKelvey gets to the quarterback before he can set up and throw the ball. That defensive front, Jay McKelvey's 87, Chris Schultz is number 56, Chuck Sigler is 66, and Jim Verderosa is number 77. Right now, they don't have Verderosa in there. They're going with a quicker man at right end. And play. here goes a by, right by the defender. Got a good gain on the play, but it's still long yardage for Brick Memorial, so they're going to have to give up the football. Brick Memorial tried to run a draw play, which was a good call in that situation. They picked up about seven yards, but they had about fourth and 22, so it still brings up a fourth and 15. Once again, Slevin and Garrity are back. Ramsey standing on a 32 to punt. No rush. Good strong kick. Garrity goes back, fumbles it, picks it up, and is hit immediately by Boyle. An excellent coverage, and we'll take a timeout. Down play as the Raiders are back at their own eight yard line on the excellent punt by Pete Ramsey. They try to wedge it out. Get a little better field position. They go off the right side. And number 70, Argon Dizia, the uh, left end, made the tackle on Schiavo. The Raiders have to settle down here and continue to do just what they did and power the ball out of there, particularly when they're here in their own territory. They can't afford a turnover, which would give the momentum of the ball game to Brick Memorial. Second and five for the Raiders. Garrity and Slevin, the setback, Shirell the wing to the left. And they come to the left side and Brick is really charging across that line of scrimmage. The monster man, Jeff Munster, charged through and they'll take a loss on a play. Again, Brick Memorial with almost that nine-man front and blitzing people, and it's a very, very, very difficult defense to run against. That's gonna bring up third and eight for the Raiders. Bob, with this early starting time, I'm wondering how many people are gonna zip over to the Brick Township game, which starts around one o'clock today, and catch the second half. And the only problem I thought about, the only problem is, I bet you're not gonna be able to get anywhere near that school on Chambers Bridge Road. It's just gonna be jammed with cars. Third and eight. Schiavo right straight ahead, and he's stacked up by several white shirts. And on the bottom was the man we found out who he is, Bob, number 87, Paul Walski. He is the strong linebacker, strong side linebacker, a 5'10", 170 pound senior. Yatesy at his three yard line, the punt. And Mark gets it off. High punt, Duckworth at the 46, hit immediately by Chevrier. And here's the man I talked about, Bob, uh, on the introductions that hasn't had a lot of publicity, but I think he's been a super outside linebacker all year long. Chevrier, last time we saw him, Ken against Southern Regional, made four or five outstanding tackles in the open field. He was the only man who was really downfield to cover that punt. There were two or three blockers around. He penetrated him and again made a great open field tackle. And he delivers those open field tackles with a lot of power. Chevrier, a 5'8", 165-pound senior left outside linebacker. Up the middle they go with number 23, the ball carrier, and ran into a wall. Mark Gaspich was the ball carrier. Can the Raiders have to force something here? They have to start making some things happen. They were the more physical of the two teams, and gradually Brick Memorial is inching closer and closer on his exchange of punts to the uh, Raider goal line. Uh, and if the Raiders are going to get that big break, they have to force it on defense. Those linebackers for East have Chevrier at left side, 
Chris Schiava, the 220 pounder on the inside. Tony Infante, 175 pounder, right inside. And Mark Yatesy, the right outside linebacker, 150 pounder. Here's a good run by Tippinaro, the tailback, and he looks like he's got a first down. At that power high formation, they just split the two lead backs, and they round up running a blast, a blast play back off the other side to the second back, and he picked up good yardage. Just short of a first down, and they need another yard on third down. Mike Murata is the offensive center for Brick Memorial. Here's the pass attempt, pressure's on, and Sigler got there first, and then McKelvey put him away. East has not woken up yet offensively, but they certainly are tough up front with that defensive line. They get great penetration in there on any kind of passing situation. I think you have a replay. Here you can see the backs, how they split, and that uh, pulls the linebackers out, but you can see the great inside pass rush by three of the four front linemen for East. Loss of nine, fourth, and ten. Ramsey, his third punt. Gets another high one. The rush was on, but he got it off. Fair catch by Garrity. He fumbled it on it. Very close. Down there was number 87 of Brick Memorial and almost got his hands on a football. That's Walski. With the poor field position, the position he has been getting, Ken, uh, it limits considerably the amount of offense that Coach Jack can use because he doesn't have any kind of lead. It's a nothing-nothing game, cannot afford to turn over. And Brick Memorial, on the other hand, keeps gambling with that almost nine-man front, and they're looking to force a turnover so that they can get the ball down here the East goal line. Joe Scott has some kind of a problem here. He was going to come over the sideline, started back to the huddle. Official says, now go over there. I think it's his uh, helmet strap. The official doesn't want him to play with the, the one he has, so they're going to have to work on this. Well, we got a brief time out here. The other night, the St. Joe cheerleaders, Bob, you weren't there. The, Ray Wilson and I worked the St. Joe uh, Thanksgiving game. They have called me over to the fence and said, we predict, and they gave me some predictions. So I made a note of it, see if anybody could come close on a prediction. So I gave East equal opportunity here today, and the squad turned in these predictions on the game. Senior captain Sue Saxton, who was up for homecoming queen today, they'll announce that at halftime, predicted 28 to nothing East. The other captain, Kathy White, said 20 to 13. Debbie Johnson, a senior, said 14 to three. Sophomore Lisa Musetska, 20 to six. Sophomore Karen O'Neill predicted 27-14. Tracy Manzo, a sophomore, says 28 to 12. Therese Saviano, familiar name in football here in Ocean County, said 28 to seven. Gail Krause, a senior, 28 to three. Dawn Theobald, a sophomore, predicted 20 to seven. And Judy Sullivan, a junior, is very optimistic, 39 to six. I don't know if we'll see that. Uh, <laughs> East doesn't really seem to be as sharp as we've seen them earlier in the year. And uh, coming off that tremendous emotional high last week against Southern Regional, it's very tough for them to come in here now and get ready again. Araposigi, when he was coaching at Notre Dame, said you can only get a great team up three times a season. So we'll see who, which girl comes the closest today. Girls, good luck. Here's the first down play by East. And Joe Scott hands it off, and right there was number 66, Joe Marol, the right tackle. Can to finish what Parsegian said, you can get a great team up three times. The rest you have to win on raw talent. So East has got to be surgeon like here, come out and do what they have to do. That's the end of the first quarter. And there's no score, we'll be right back. As we get ready to start the second quarter, the first quarter came your way today by the New Jersey National Bank, along with Marita's Skier's Place, Dunkin' Donuts of Bayville, and Carolina Furniture. The second quarter, again, is sponsored by the New Jersey National Bank, the Red Circle Full Service Bank, along with Luigi's Deli, Carolina Furniture, and Blair's Rental Service. Well, East has the football at the 16-yard line. They have a second and 10. Scott rolling out to the left. So decides to keep it. And he makes a nice gain of it and goes out of bounds right very close to the first down marker. A very gutsy call by Coach Jack and a very heady play by Scott. 
Uh, Coach Jack realizes he's got to get out of the shadows of his own end zone here. He's got to start making some things happen. So he rolled Scott out that time, and Scott had receivers, but there was co good coverage. So he tucked the ball in, and he ran it up field and got very close to the first down marker. Here's the measurement. Now they do have it first down. All right. With the kind of pressure that East has been getting with this uh, almost nine-man front, you've got to get outside quick so you can make things happen. Adam Glansman's in there tight end for the Raiders. Scott rolling the right this time and throws under pressure incomplete. The nearest receiver was number 36, Valente, the split end, Bob Valente. Again, a heady play by Scott. He rolled out and tried to get the corner like he did last time, going to the other side. But his receivers were covered, and rather than take a big loss under the pressure, he put the ball in the dirt. For letterheads, envelopes, posters, flyers, business forms, invitations, and all your printing needs, don't forget the Office Copy Center Printing Company of Tom's River, the home of the one-day business card. Just call 349-4611, 349-4611, for all your printing needs. Second and 10, split backfield, slot to the right. Scott setting up a screen. He's being pressured way back to 10. He fires the ball to the ground, he's gonna get a grounding call. And Scott's arguing. Don Warren, the nose guard, was putting the heat on along with Monster back, Jeff Munster, and they made Scott around that football. That's going to be a stiff penalty because uh, it's going to be lost it down with it. And it's going to push East really down close to their own goal line. Bob, is that a good name for a monster back? Munster the monster? <laughs> well, there's crew talking to Don Warren, a defensive captain. It's kind of tough. To There's block. no decision here, Bob. It's automatic loss of down. You no, got to, you know, yeah, you definitely take the penalty. It's it's kind of tough to block uh, when you have seven and eight people rushing all the time and only six blockers. And uh, Brick Memorial's really been playing a great game defensively. The ball's back at the eight. Third down, very long yards. They got to go up to the uh, 37 for first down. I think you might just see Coach Jack here try and move the ball out away from the goal line and play for the, the punt rather than take a gamble on an interception or a turnover. About 31 yards to go. We have an overcast day here, but uh, the wind is not a factor, and it's a nice day for football. Scott fakes the handoff, throwing from his end zone, screen to the left. And Valente still on his feet. And he'll get about a eight-yard gain on a play, but they're going to have to give up the football. I have to say this, Coach Jack has got a lot of guts at the, to, and a lot of confidence in his team to pull a play like that, pull the screen pass out of your own end zone. But he did get some room, and hopefully they'll be able to get the kick off. Left end, Anthony Argandizia made the stop for the Mustangs. Gates, he's standing on his four-yard line, gets it off, high punt. Near midfield, Duckworth, fair catch at the 47-yard line. It was an excellent punt by Yates, considering he had a punt under pressure from both outside people, and he got a good high punt, which allowed coverage downfield. Again, though, Brick Memorial will be getting the ball with excellent field position. All right, Shea comes in a quarterback. John Shea, 6'1", 170 pounds. Tailback, Tipanaro. Tipanaro right up the middle. Picks up about three. Second and seven. We have somebody shaking up for the Raiders. Schultz? Yeah, it looks like Chris Schultz. He's going to come out. Number 50 for Tom's River East will replace him. I have no 50 on my roster. I'm we're doing good today, Bob. Six 
Second and seven. Tempanero once again, right up the middle they go. Tempanero, strong effort, first down. Rick Memorial has continued to run out of a power eye right formation, and they fake to the fullback and give to the second back. By having two up backs, it freezes the East linebackers. We'll have a replay coming up here, Ken. And you can see that the partial fake to the fullback and give the second back. Now that fake freezes the inside linebackers. And he saw, he saw a great run there. It almost popped all away. I've just been told number 50, Scott Harris, who is 52 on our roster. Here goes Tempanaro again, straight up the middle. And he runs into Mr. Verderosa and the gang. And we talked, Ken, before how Britain Memorial shows that definite tendency if they have a good play to come right back to it on the next down. That secondary for Tom's of East has Sal Shirell and Vinnie Garrity as the corners and Joe Scott, the safety. Calling defensive signals, Chris Schiavo, the middle linebacker. Second and six. Roll to the right, goes Duckworth, cuts it in, and Duckworth has a first down. The Mustangs are moving the football. Ken East has got to wake up here. The Mustangs are gaining confidence as they play, and they keep moving closer and closer, as we said in the first quarter, towards that East goal line. Chris Schultz back in there, made the tackle for the Raiders. And the Mustangs have uh, dominated this game here as far as holding on to the football and moving it here. What's going to happen here, Ken, if the Mustangs can put one in, they're going to be very, very tough. They're going to get a lot of momentum. They're already starting to believe because they've won their last two games. They've got a lot more confidence now after beating Point Pleasant Borough. And again, they go right over the middle. This time off the left guard and pick up some more good yardage. The ball carrier was number 23, Gaspich, and they got another five yards. See the way they're coming up that line of scrimmage that they are enthusiastic. Tip an arrow to the tailback. He's down to about the 20-yard line. Again, they, they find a hole, they hit that hole, and they come right back with it. Just short of the 20, about the 21-yard line. Third and three. And Donnie Reed operates with that philosophy that if you find the hole, go at it until they stop you. In comes Duckworth. And Dan Boyle comes in at split end for the Mustangs. What you might see here now is the fake run and the pass, hoping to catch East off guard and get the touchdown. They keep another those ends tight. Duckworth tries to roll. Jay McKelvey was there along with Chevrier. And those two names have been consistent with Tom's River East defense for quite a while, Ken. So it'll bring up fourth down, loss of a yard, fourth and four. If they try to field goal, it would be about a 42, 43 yard field goal. It's gonna be a long attempt. There you see our predictors, the cheerleading squad of Tom's River East, now going into the prog prognosticating business. That means predicting of football games. You can see how coaches uh, who played under Warren Wolf have learned their lesson well. Donnie Reed realizes that this is a crucial play early in the game here, and he wisely took the time out to, co to consider all his options and not make a hasty decision that he would regret later on. I see Joe Adelizzi here. I thought he'd be over at the Brick uh, Vi uh, Millville game. Joe Adelizzi, the Asbury Park Press Sports Editor, is here on the sidelines, a former Toms of a South Indian. Ken, I think a lot of people are planning on doing what we said earlier, to catch this game and then go get the second half of the Brick Millville game. But I agree with you. I don't think you're going to be able to get anywhere near the Green Dragons field this afternoon. It's going to be a rough problem getting the parking space. So we have a timeout here. The clock shows 7.48 left in the half. No score. And so far, East has been hampered by very poor field position. And also right now, they're having a problem stopping the power. Several changes were made. Memorial. Several changes were made in the offensive unit. Uh, we might see something tricky coming up here. All right, Tippanaro moves up the fullback from the tailback slot. They give it to Tippanaro. He's met right at the line of scrimmage by Infante, Tony Infante, the uh, right inside linebacker. I think Ken Brick Memorial was going to try and run an option, but when a quarterback gave the ball to the fullback, before he was able to ride him into the line and take it out, he was hit by a rugged Tom's River East defensive line. So the Raider defense holds at the 22-yard uh, line. 
And the offense goes to work. Schiavo didn't get much. Number 53 on the bottom of the stack, weak side linebacker Mike Morata. The Raiders have to start establishing some kind of momentum here. They have to get back into a basic game plan, start powering the ball and mixing up their play selection and move that ball down the field. So Glenn, so Glenn, I just want to say Glenn Clark went into the ball game for Schiava. Glenn's 44. Go ahead. So far this afternoon, Rick Memorial has contained them and stopped them from doing that by making big defensive plays. It's a second and eight. They keep the split end in tight. Valeni on the right side. And Memorial jumps off sides. Don Warren and Mike Murata shot through before the ball was snapped. Five yard penalty against the Mustangs. You may have seen Scott change off on his cadence there. Occasionally when a team is coming at you very hard defensively, if your team is well disciplined and you can change cadences, uh, you can take a little bit of that defensive charge off them by changing count and getting a penalty. Second and a long three yards. Slevin is trapped behind a line of scrimmage. We have Gang tackling by the Mustangs. We have another flag down, Ken. And leading that charge on the bottom of the stack was the nose man, Don Warren. Holding is the call against the Raiders. So they got the five yard penalty and they give it right back on the holding penalty. Not a fair exchange, Bob. No, you get five and give up 15. It's not, and what it's going to do, it's going to once again put East back close to their own goal line, and uh, they've been unable to get any kind of consistent offense going all afternoon, and just when it looked like they may have something going here, they're going to have long yardage again. George Jack has Chris Schiavo stand next to him, getting ready to send him in with a play. As he has the headsets on to the coaches up above, Penalty takes the ball down to the 14. And in goes Schiava replacing Glenn Clark with the next play. I don't think East has gotten outside their own 35 yard line this whole half, Ken. Wing to the right, high formation. Scott rolls. And good pursuit, and the Mustangs are right there to stack up Scott. On a stop, Mike Murata, the linebacker. Now, that was not an option pass, Ken. That was run all the way. Scott rolled out, took the ball, tucked it under, and just kept on going behind his blockers. Here you see the scoreboard, the clock running, under six minutes. This is third down. About 17 to go. So the Raiders haven't been able to get any spark going here in the first half. Scott wants to throw. Pump, fakes a couple pumps. Now he's going to run it out. Duckworth comes up, misses the tackle. Scott fumbles the football. Yeah, but he was down, Kenny. He fumbled as he hit the ground, and that was a great play by Scott. He went back, and he saw his receivers covered. He saw daylight up the field. He tucked the ball in, and he's really close to the first down. I think he's got it. Duckworth came up and missed the tackle as he Scott put a move on. Oregon Deasy finally made a stop. We have to take a timeout. We'll be right back. And it's going to be Slevin. There's a flag after the play, and I believe this is going to be against Brick. The official is talking to one of the, it's Duckworth he's talking to. I believe it's going to be a personal foul. He's talking to two players here, Ken. One from East and one from Brick Memorial. Shirella and Duckworth apparently got into it. Now we have a substitute coming on. I don't know whether he threw somebody out of the game or not. I think it's just a substitution of what has nothing to do with the penalty. We may have had a little roughness exchanged after the ball was dead, and the officials are talking about an elbows being thrown. Well, this is a good thing. You take it, Bob, take control of the game when something like this st first starts, rather than let it continue and turn into something bigger. Yes, it's always best to control a situation right away before you have a fight or something like that break out. 
So they're talking to the captains now to get this thing uh, straight, the way they want this game played, as Chris Schultz came up to talk to the official. And he'll march off the 15-yard personal foul penalty against the Golden Mustangs, and that's going to bring the ball up the midfield. You have the frustration levels of both teams building. Brick Memorial, because they've been playing uh, in the close to the East goal line a whole first half and been unable to put the ball in. And East is a little frustrated because they've been unable to put a drive together. But now with Scott's brilliant play and a penalty coming up, they're going to have the best field position they've had all half. Looking at the uh, Mustangs, and if you're interested in some of the teams they played this year, they opened with Wall, which is a super club this year, lost, then beat Central. They shut out Manalpin 13-0. They lost to Asbury Park by only four points. That gives you an indication of the kind of ball they played. Asbury Park is a talented football team. They beat Allentown by a couple of touchdowns, lost to Manasquan by only one point, and then uh, the last two games beat Freehold Township and shut out Point Pleasant Borough. So they're coming off two shutouts in a row, so their defense has certainly done a great job for Coach Don Reed. There's no question of it, Ken. Brick Memorial has definitely turned a corner, and they're on their way to being a good football team and having a good program. First down, Slevin slips as he cuts inside and immediately is fallen on by number 21, Dan Boyle. Apparently, I was looking for the penalty to come up to midfield, Bob. The official marched off and stopped at the uh, midfield straight. Apparently, there's two penalties on a play. I don't know. They must have called offsetting penalties, but I cannot understand why it became first and 25 if that was the situation. Apparently, it was uh, unsportsmanlike conduct was the call against the Raiders. After the personal foul, one of the East players answered back and got the unsportsmanlike conduct. After the ball was dead and the penalty was assessed after the first down. Here's Scott to throw. He's going long. He's got Valente behind a man and overthrows him. At the 15-yard line, Valente got behind Herb Hune. Yeah, Valenti, I think, lost Scott and thought Scott might have been sacked and didn't know which way to break, and then all of a sudden the ball appeared out there, and he was uh, a couple of steps behind it. That was the first long pass we've seen today by Tom Ziver East as Scott went for the bomb on third down. We're getting an explanation from Al Detweiler, one of the officials here in the press box. What Al said to us is the first penalty call was a, a live ball penalty, so it was assessed, and the second one was a dead ball foul, and therefore it was assessed after the first down. Third and long for the Raiders. Scott dumps it off to Slevin on a little hitch pass. Slevin up to midfield and met there by number T3, Gaspich. It was a good play, Ken, but it's with all that distance to go, it's going to bring up fourth down. Well, the Raiders will try now to put Brick in bad field position as they'll punt from midfield. Dropping back is Yates, Yatesy at the uh, 37. High snap, but he's got it. Good kick. Kick is going to send Duckworth backpedaling, and he'll let it roll. That's going to be down on a five-yard line. That ball slowed up and gave East a chance to come down, down that ball in the five. So this is going to be a reversed situation. Now the Mustangs are going to be bottled up in bad field position. Can we have an East player down on a field, but while we wait to identify him, I think we have to say that. East, if it was not for that penalty, that was the best that East has moved the football this half. And East, I think, is beginning to wake up a little bit and realize what they have to do. Pat Slevin using his speed to get down there on the coverage and down the football at the five-yard line. Ed Sarluka just coming off the field. He's the first one on there to see about the injury. We had 3.16 to go in a half, Ken. And uh, I think you're going to see uh, Ed Salukas make his defense pressure here and try and force a turnover so they can get a score before the half. First, he talked Donnie Reed coming from Brick. One of the coaches on the Brick Memorial staff is a former Central Regional standout, John Bach, who was a running back for the Golden Eagles. And uh, one of my old friends from Phillipsburg, uh, Steve Giroliman, is handling the defense. He's a defensive coordinator for Mustangs. That's Chevrier. Chevrier is up. up. He's a big part of this East team. Yeah, it's good to see him. I think he just had the wind knocked out of him. He's a tough kid. He'll be back. I was a little worried there because the loss of him, he's their best open field tackler. We have three minutes and 16 seconds left in the first half. Still no score. And Brick Memorial huddling in their own end zone. 
the pressure of the game now has switched over to Brick Memorial. They're the ones who can't afford the mistake and uh, have a turnover down here because it would be very costly. Coming up at halftime, we'll be talking to Supervisor of Athletics here at Tom's River East, Bill Lundy. We'll talk about the possibilities on the playoff site for next week's state championship game. Timpanero right back to the line of scrimmage, and that's the best he could do. McKelvey comes across and makes a stop. I think you may see Coach Jack here uh, use a timeout soon so that he can uh, preserve some time if they get the ball. If they stop Brick Memorial down here on this next play, I think you may see a timeout call to uh, preserve some time for East when they get the ball. Coming wide and about five or six black shirts all congregating around the football. whole right side of the Raider defense. Gang tackling. Tony Infante was the leader in here at the time and he had a lot of help. Third and 10. Ball still were right where it started. Down to the two minute mark. A lot of seconds ticking off, Ken. I think I gotta use the timeout. Tip and arrow is pushed back. Gonna lose the yard on a play. They finally do take a timeout. That's gonna give them good field position with 142 to go. I think you might even see a block called here because if they get the block, the kicker's gotta kick uh, fairly shallow. If you get the block, you got a touchdown. One minute, 42 seconds. Meanwhile, if you get the penalty, it doesn't really hurt you because they get the ball with very little time left deep in their own territory. Ed Sarluka, defensive coordinator, is talking to his club. That's the defensive unit that really shut down Southern Regional in two ball games this year. Quite an accomplishment. This is a good position to be in for a coach because whether you go for the block or you go for the return, you wind up with good field position. If you got confidence in your return man, you go for the return and you'll get the ball still, uh, hopefully around a 25, 30 yard line. And Ed bounds out of the huddle and remembers he's got something else he wants to say. Now he comes off. Now Ram ready to go. Ramsey has been punting for Brick Memorial and while he's been booming the ball, he's been taking time to get the kick off. He's been kicking uh, the ball, he's been dropping it very high. So uh, I think the kick could be had, but it looks like East is gonna elect to go for the return instead. Right in front of the goal post is Ramsey. And it's gonna be a very short kick. And Garrity says, no, I won't do it. He lets it roll, play it safe. You and got, Memorial downs it. You got a fair catch the ball in that situation, Ken. As that ball rolls around, his seconds ticking off. You lose 10 or 15 seconds, and that's a play or two. Well, with 128 left in the half, the Raiders are 39 yards away from the goal line. Scott the throw on first down. Screen being set up, and Scott doesn't get the ball off. He is going to throw it to Schiavo, and Schiavo is hit by number 87. That was purely an improvised play. Scott was back there looking for the screen. It wasn't set up. He rolled out, saw Schiavo through it, and turned uh, what would have been a loss. Uh, he got the ball back to the line of scrimmage. Paul Walski, the linebacker, on a stop. The Raiders pick up some good yardage on the ball. It'll be second and four. Scott again to throw. Down the middle, Sherrell. sherrell has got it at the 16-yard line. Sal Sherrell. First and 10 Raiders at the 16. Shirella ran a beautiful pattern, Kenny. Just brought a short post pattern. Got underneath the drop of Brick Memorial's defenders. Steve Demeza comes in. Number 16 for the Raiders. And the clock is running. 50 seconds. Scott gives a slab and is met right in the backfield by number 40, Jeff Munster. East fans yelling for a personal foul here. There is a flag on the play. 
I think the East fans were hollering because it looked like he broke away, uh, but it was after the whistle. And the clock is stopped. 35 seconds on the timeout. East stops the clock. You have to have a lot of confidence in your offensive running attack with uh, under 50 seconds to go in a game and being out around a 20-yard line to call a running play. If you elect to pass the ball, you get three shots at the goal line. A running play, you're only going to get two, maybe. Well, on the penalty, they should have uh, should have saved the timeout. Yeah, they called it before they realized they had a penalty. I think the penalty is going to be against East. Coach Jack may have been trying to center the ball for a field goal attempt. That's maybe why he was running the ball and figured that the field goal was as good as a, as good as a touchdown in this situation. It's a big one, 15 yards. That's going to take him out of field goal range, Ken. Ball goes way up to the 34-yard line. That is a really hurting the Raiders, that penalty right there. It was a 35 holding. seconds left. It was a holding penalty. Scott's looking to the sideline to see what play and uh, wants to know whether they want to try and get down there close to set up the field goal or they want to take a shot for a home run and, and go all the way with it. Regardless what happens in this situation, I'm sure Coach Jack is going to have some choice words for his Raiders when they get in, those locker room, in the locker room. Steve Geralman is the coach out there for Brick. He wears number 44. We talked about him earlier. He played in that first Brick Township Goldspur game back in 1964. And he led his team to an undefeated season and a big victory over Brick. So George Jack remembers him. Here go the Raiders. Sherella goes in motion. Scott rolls to the same side, Sherella in motion, until he throws to Sherella, who runs out of bounds, stops the clock at the 16-yard line. Good play. Big play by Sherella. The big important thing is he stopped the clock. Set the wing back in motion to the near side. That play took only about seven or eight seconds, Ken. Scott just rolled to the near side and threw to South Sherella. By picking up the first down now with 30 seconds, they can take two shots in the air for the touchdown and still come back and kick the field goal if they want. Shoot! Sherell and Schiavo go to the far side. Scott pitches to Slevin, flag on a play. Slevin trying to get to the sideline. He does. Knocked out of bounds by Walski. Bob, it looked like they had too many men on the line of scrimmage. Is that possible? Yeah, there was only one man in the backfield. The flag went down right away. It may have been possible, Ken. I was really watching because I think what happened there is they were looking to set up a halfback option pass to Shirella, and Shirella was chucked uh, very quickly by the linebackers. So the ball was just kept, and Slevin took it outside to stop the clock. It was good thinking on his part. Just seemed like everybody was up on that line of scrimmage, and uh, I think it may come against the Raiders for illegal formation. Yeah, the penalty is going to be against the Raiders, Ken, but I'm not sure what the call was. Again, it's going to hurt them. Five yards, yep. back to the 20. Illegal procedure. About five changes came into the lineup for the Raiders. I think we're going to have a field goal attempt. 23 seconds left. I would take one more shot at it, Ken. Run that clock down well, a little bit I see Yatesy in there, and he's the holder. And there yeah. goes the T. Yeah, they're going to play safe. So it is going to be a field goal. So you see Mark Yatesy going at offensive huddle. It's an indication that they're going to attempt a field goal. Coach Jack here realizes that Yatesy's going to be under pressure and doesn't want to wind the clock down too much and have him kick with a, uh, a running clock. This way he's got the timeout. He can steady his ball club down, and that field goal looms very big here if they make it. Berta Rosa will attempt the field goal. Yatesy will hold. Momentum, Kenny, momentum, the name of the game. If Memorial, if the field goal is not good, Memorial is going to go in at the half, feeling that they contained them. If the field goal is good, East is going to maybe wake up here. George Jack still talking to some of the players. I don't know, we may have a fake here. He's talking to 
some of his Raiders, and maybe he's changed his mind now because Yates coming off. I think he's changed his mind. He, he's not going to attempt to field yeah, goal. Yeah, I think he realizes he still has a timeout left, so he's going to try one more shot at uh, getting the six, and if he doesn't, he'll come back and uh, try and get the field goal in. So look for the Raiders to throw the ball, and it'll probably be a pass down the sideline. And the Raiders, I don't know what's going on here, but the Raiders go back into the huddle. Apparently the officials weren't ready for him. Roberto is out there with one kicking shoe on. Scott to the near sideline, beautiful execution. And Valenti immediately stops, steps out of bounds. Duckworth on the coverage with 25 seconds, the clock stops. And on a deep flag pattern, Sal Shirella broke and was open in the end zone. But uh, Scott had already delivered the ball because he didn't want to hold it. He wanted to get in there close. Now they still got time to work with, Bob. They can still try another play here. Now, here's where those seconds before the punt come in handy too, Ken. They could have saved about 20 seconds and had 45 seconds down in here to run three or four plays by calling that timeout a little earlier. Well, they're going to run another play. They sent Adam Glansman in with a play, replacing McKelvey at end. Now the clock stopped right now with 25 seconds left. Scott being pressured, avoids the one rush. He's still on his feet, and he better dump the ball off. He's got him. He's got him in open. Touchdown. Beautiful play. What a brilliant play by Shirella. As Joe Scott really had to improvise as he ran all around that backfield, and the touchdown to Adam Glansman, the man who came in with the play at tight end. I said Shirella, but I meant Joe Scott. He broke three tackles, got away from all kinds of defenders, and then with a defender barreling into his face, managed to unload the ball. The receivers, knowing he was in trouble, did the smart thing and ran with their quarterback and got open. Scott took a pounding, but he got him in the end zone. Scott is limping off. Here's the replay. You can see Scott here get away from one defender. He rolls right, turns around, rolls left, picks up a block, gets away from a second defender, picks up another block. Sets up, sees his receiver, knows he's going to take the hit, but still gets the ball open for the touchdown. Extra point by Verderosa. Yacy holding. It's up. Good. That was a 16-yard Joe Scott to Adam Glantzman touchdown. Glantzman, a 5'7", 165-pound junior. It was actually a lot more yardage than that involved. As Scott must have run for about 25 yards before he threw the football, and he stiff-armed. Big Don Warren, number 68, the nose guard. Can I said earlier that what a good team only gets up three times a year, and they've got to win just on sheer talent. And there you saw a case of talent. The talent of Joe Scott making a big play. What a big lift that's got to be for East. That had to be one of the most exciting plays we've seen all season. And the East Raiders with 11 seconds left in the half get on a scoreboard. Seven to nothing. Tom Zimmer East leading Brick Memorial. <laughs> East coach is coming down from the spotters post here in the press box. A little bit of a smile on that play as they went go into halftime. Little by little, Ken, you could see the momentum start to switch over to East in the latter part of that second quarter. Here's the kickoff. And finally goes down. Fan on the return was number 21 for Brick, Dan Boyle. Clock stops, four seconds to play. Ken, that was definitely one of the most exciting plays we've seen all year. And people say how lucky your team is, but that's coaching because certain things happen. When Scott broke, people peeled back to help him block. And then when the receivers uh, saw the quarterback in trouble, they broke their patterns and ran patterns where the quarterback would see them. And that's just coaching. That's not luck, Ken, in that situation. A good team practices those things. Now the clock ran out. But apparently Memorial called a timeout before the clock ran out. So the officials, the team started to leave the field and the officials said, no, it's not over yet. So we're gonna have time for one more play, apparently. 
Kenny Joe Scott was our MVP last week, and some people uh, felt that there were other players definitely who had good games, and they questioned the, uh, our choice of Scott. But Scott is certainly doing one heck of a job today. He's been the offensive show for East. He's had three or four big plays carrying the ball and then passing for that touchdown under duress. Shea comes in a quarterback for the Mustangs. Rosa comes off. When good teams have great seasons, Kenny, usually what happens are different weeks, different ball players excel, and uh, the team is carried on another player's shoulders each week towards a great season. Well, right about now, the Brick Green Dragons are warming up over at Brick High School, and it won't be long before we'll know the opponent for next week's ball game. I haven't seen Millville this year, but they've probably got two or three running backs around 200 pounds that run 9, 7, and 100, and a quarterback who can throw the ball a country mile. All right, this is taking a long time to get this done here. East drops back in the straight prevents defense. They're not about to give up that big play here with uh, just a couple of seconds on the clock. We're to start the second half. The sponsors for the upcoming third period, New Jersey National Bank, along with Gem Furniture, Service Star Hardware, and Carolina Furniture. The uh, Raiders are ready to kick off, going left to right. And if you join us late, it's seven to nothing as Tom Zarese got on the scoreboard in the second period on a 16-yard pass and quite a scramble by quarterback Joe Scott and then threw to Adam Glantzman completely across the field, right to left, with 11 seconds left in the period. And Bob, uh, as we said earlier, one of the uh, more exciting plays of the whole season as Scott really improvised on the touchdown play. And uh, evidence of good coaching was there as the receivers seen Scott was under duress, uh, broke patterns where Scott could see them, and they were able to get open for the touchdowns. It was a very exciting play. And Ken, we're waiting for the signal here. Ken, while we're waiting for the signal, it might be interesting to note that Brick Memorial completed the season without giving up a, first, uh, a touchdown in the first quarter the entire season. End over end, short kick, middle of the field. And coming right up the middle on the return across the 30 yard line to about the 33. Gang tackling by the special teams of Times of East. And Memorial goes on offense. I believe that was Boyle on a return, Ken. Danny Boyle is split end, number 21, returned the kickoff. So the Ra Raiders go on defense to start the second half. And. Brick Memorial under Donnie Reed uh, coming out here today really fired up to knock off the Raiders on their way to the state playoffs. Memorial was very, very, very tough on defense in the first half. Shea opens the second half at quarterback, number eight, dumps the pass off in a short pattern right down the Memorial sidelines and knocked out of bounds. Looks like a first down for Brick Memorial. Gaspich was the receiver on the play. Sherelle on a stop for the Raiders. Well, it shows you what Brick Memorial feels. They feel they're going to come right back and get right back in the game. They opened up throwing on a first down, and they've gotten to the middle of the field in a hurry. Ball's marked at the 45-yard line. First and 10 for the Mustangs. High formation. Ends are tight. Tailback, tip and arrow on the call, and he's going to pick up about four on the play. Fonte on the tackle for the Raiders, the right inside linebacker, number 38. A little bit of a delayed handoff, almost like a draw, Ken, and uh, Tipanero got in there and gives him a second down and good field position. Just short of midfield at the 49-yard line of the Mustangs. If the Mustangs can come down a field and score here, we're going to have an exciting ball game. Shea hands up to Tipanero. Once again, Tipanero falls forward. I think he's got a first down. Making the tackle, Shirella, the left cornerback. Ken, these Mustangs uh, feel that they shouldn't have given up that first down score. And they feel like they're looking for this calf, even though they can show on the scoreboard. And they're coming right out, fired up here. They want to get back on that scoreboard in a hurry and even things up. Officials are going to measure for the first down. And they've got it. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. And Memorial starting off again like they did in the first quarter, moving the football. And they continue to alternate the quarterbacks as Duckworth is 
Tipney out calling the signals. Tipinaro again carries. And up the middle he goes, picking up three or four yards. On the bottom of the stack is McKelvey, the left end. Donnie Creek showing a lot of poise to come back and establish the game. Right at it, moving the ball very well. Gain of four, second, and six. Duckworth runs the quarterback keep, and he has really hit hard at the line of scrimmage. And uh, McKelvey's made a couple big plays here on defense for Tom Zerist. Third down coming up. Chris Schiavo in there on a stop also, and Bob, uh, Raiders get tucked there when they have to. Yeah, that's a big play right here because uh, they don't want to give up a first down and get into four down territory. If they hold them here, Brick will have to punt. Shea rolls out to the right, keeps the ball. He's got a blocker, but he can't get loose. He throws the football. The receiver's on the ground, incomplete. They had a receiver open deep, but they just couldn't get set up and uh, deliver the ball. And uh, that was a big play because uh, will now punt. If they had picked up that first down, they would have crossed into four down territory. And uh, East will be getting the ball deep in its own territory again. All right, Pete Ramsey will have to drop back the punt for Memorial. And once again, he sends Slevin and Garrity back to return this punt. Low snap, fumbles it, picks it up. Short kick, straight up in the air. And there'll be no return. Mustangs down it immediately. Interesting to see here, Ken. A minute the ball was kicked short. All the black shirts just ran away from it, which shows that they've been coached at in practice because they don't want to take a chance that ball would hit off one of those black shirts and give Brick Memorial back the ball. So the Raiders go on offense, and they take over first and 10 at the 28-yard line. On that touchdown play in the first half, Joe Scott took a very hard hit and was shaken up. So he's coming back into the game. It would be interesting to see if he was able to shake that off or not. Scott hands off to there Slevin. Slevin's got a hole. Slevin's got a first down. And he's across the 40-yard line. I would imagine at halftime, Coach Jack had some words for his offensive unit. Slevin, as we told you, is that... Here's the replay, Bob. You're going to see yeah. the quickness of Pat Slevin getting to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he's the fastest man on the East team. And you can see here it's just a straight handoff on a power play. And he breaks up in the air and he breaks a tackle or two and picks up good yardage. First and ten. Wing left. And Garrity stacked up behind the line of scrimmage, falls forward, and maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Argandizia on the bottom of the tackle for Brick Memorial, the left end. Gonna give him a one yard loss, second and 11 for the Raiders. Clock showing eight minutes left, third period. Raiders leading seven to nothing. Wing to the right, Shirella. And Scott gives to Slevin. Slevin cannot find a hole. Four or five Mustangs up to make the stop. That Mustang defensive unit has been playing very, very tough all afternoon, Ken. They've managed to stack up play after play by East Raiders. Pete Ramsey led the defensive charge for the Mustangs. Jack continues to alternate his tight ends with the plays and also his halfbacks. Slevin and Garrity alternating and Glantzman alternates with McKelvey at tight end. Slot to the right. Jump pass over the middle and he's got McKelvey the tight end coming from the left side. And there's a first down for the Raiders at the 45-yard line of Brick Memorial. Again, it was Joe Scott who made that play, Ken. He made an excellent fake on the handoff, and which enabled the linebacker to freeze, and the tight end was, open, uh, was able to get open on that little pop pass. See the replay, Bob. Here you can see, watch the, the great fake to Schiavo, and then the uh, 
Excellent pass over the middle. Shirella flanks to the near side for the Raiders. They pitch and go to the left side with Slevin, and he's stacked up for a loss as number 66, Joe Maroa, the tackle, was into the backfield to break up the play. Give me a loss of uh, three. Ken, I'm impressed with this Brick Memorial defense. Uh, there's been some plays that have picked up some yardage against them, but uh, they keep coming back and coming back and making a big play time after time, and they've contained East very effectively almost all afternoon. Shirella goes in motion from the slot. Scott on the quick out pass of Valente, incomplete. Valente appeared to take his eyes off the ball just before he caught it. He was looking for the sideline to see if he was out of bounds. It's a big play here again. It's third and about 12 yards, and Scott's looking for Coach Jack for the signal. Well, that's one thing. It's easy to find George Jack. He's the only one with a cowboy hat. The kids, uh, you have to love George. He's got a great personality. He's a very warm individual. Really cares about kids and makes the game fun. Third down play for East. Scott rolling to the right, getting a good block from Verderosa. And incomplete. And Tennifer Shirella at the 20-yard line. The coverage by Duckworth, number seven. So the Raiders are going to have to punt the football. 5.51 left, third quarter. Scott was under pressure that time, and Verderosa peeled back and blocked and uh, enabled him to get the ball off uh, a little bit better pass, and we might have seen a big score. Yates, he gets the punt off. Going to be a return on the play. And Slevin refuses to let that man get around him and runs him out of bounds. Let's take a time out. We'll be right back. All right, Memorial's going on offense. And Shea's the quarterback. And it gets some good holes here and uh, several missed tackles as that man just kept going, broke a couple tackles, and he's, I believe, got a first down. He does. So uh, right away, Memorial opens it up and picks up the first down on the first play from scrimmage and Gaspage was the ball carrier. Get the program lists Gaspich at 5'11", 190 pounds. He showed some really hard running there. Fullback falls, got yardage going backwards, Bob, as he was spun around there at the line of scrimmage by McKelvey. You know, East is, uh, appears to be a little bit asleep. They've got to come back. They can't afford to sit on that 7-0 lead. Uh, Brick Memorial has been moving the ball in spurts here, and if Brick Memorial gets a score, they're, they're, it's really going to be tough. All right, Schiavo calling the defensive signals for East. Second and seven. Timpanaro, he runs into about four black shirts there at the 40-yard line. And bring up third down and about four. When you watch these two clubs, Ken, uh, you see Brick Memorial seems to have a lot more spirit. They're, they're, they're moving back and forth to the line of scrimmage quicker. They're setting. They're firing off the ball. And uh, East appears to be a little bit lethargic. Uh, I hope that they're still not looking to reserve their seats at Meadowlands yet. They've got to win this ball game. Got 10 more minutes. The Brick Green Dragons are going to be starting their ball game. Tipanero in motion to the far side. Jump pass over the middle, almost intercepted by Chris Schiavo. Uh, Schiavo must have known something from a scouting report there. He was playing his inside linebacker. As soon as the back went in motion, Schiavo dropped looking for that receiver coming over the middle and got a hand up, almost picked the ball off. And watching this East defense, it's almost like watching old pros. They, they bend, but they're not breaking. Somebody comes up with the big play all the time. Ramsey from his 26. Punts the ball away. Again, a short punt. No return on the play. 
East covers it at the 37. Three minutes, 48 seconds left, third period. I keep waiting for East to assert itself and put on one of its patented power uh, drives up the field using a lot of that clock, but they've been unable to do it all afternoon. Lenny split to the near side. Whistle before the play could develop. Doesn't count. The legal procedure against the Raiders. Five yard penalty coming up. Again, now this will put the Raiders in a hole. They had good field position. Now they're going to have first and long yardage right away to start off this drive. It'll be first and 15 for East. Ball back at the 33 yard line. And again, the flags come out. This, this time it's going to be against Brick Memorial. The referee pointed to one of the Brick Memorial players. I, I don't know. Uh, we may have a mouthpiece or an encroachment, I'm not sure. I didn't see any signal, Ken, did you? Nope, no signal, just the penalty. Oh, right back where we started from. Everybody in tight, wing in motion. Fake to the wing, pressure is on Scott, and he is sacked, way back at the 24-yard line. It was number 23, Mark Gash, Gash blitzing out of his uh, defensive posi uh, outside position, and he came on Scott's blind side, and Scott never saw him. <laughs> One of the fans asking what happened to, the, to our line there in that play. That's going to bring up a uh, second down and about 20. <laughs> Danger all afternoon. Uh, they, they have got to watch themselves. If they give a turnover to this Brick Memorial team, they could be in trouble. A 7 nothing lead uh, may not stand up. i tell you, since we saw them earlier in the year, they've really improved an awful lot this year, Brick Memorial. Scott pump fakes, goes long down the far sideline. Slevin is there, and off his sh uh, shoulder pad. Hit him right in the uh, chest. Right above the numbers, and he just couldn't get a handle on it. He was kind of, the defensive man, I think, distracted him a little bit. No one can accuse, accuse George Jack of playing a conservative game. Watch the replay. Here you can see Scott drop back. This time he gets some time. He pump fakes. He's got the receiver way out there. And I, I think the Brick Memorial defender just got his hand on the ball as it came in. So East trying to strike for the whole ball wax on the long pass and uh, just missed as Slevin got behind the defender. 2.05, clock stopped on the incompletion, third period. Scott again to throw, gets time, he gets it to Shirella, just short of the first down. No, no, Ken, that's Very the, close uh, here, where are they marking? That's the initial marker, it's still gonna bring up oh, a I'm fourth sorry, and about 10. I'm sorry, the wrong marker, they had long yardage. So it's gonna bring up a kicking situation, and they're gonna have to give up the football once again. Here's, watch the replay. Right, you can see, he delivers the ball nicely over the middle, and it's a nice catch by Shirella, but uh, it's not enough for the first down. Punt's going to come from the 25. High snap, but Yates, he has it. And Memorial decides to let it roll. Chevrier gets down here to cover on the football. Goes out of bounds. So Brick Memorial takes over at the 19-yard line. Ken, you mentioned earlier that we had seen Brick Memorial earlier this season, and they were very much improved ball club. There's several ways to, to build a program, and uh, one way, naturally, if you get great kids, you become good right away. The other way is just develop sound basics, which Brick Memorial has done. They don't make those uh, mistakes that uh, losing teams do. They, they're a solid blocking team, a solid tackling team. They're well coached, and they, they really have improved. They're going to be very tough next year. Next year, Brick Memorial goes into the A division. 
And they'll replace Central Regional, who will drop down into B Division South. McKelvey in on a stop for the Raiders, a gain of a yard, second and nine for the Mustangs. Coach Tony Reed here now has got uh, big decisions to make. He's, he's operating deep in his own territory, and while he'd like to get some good field position, he's a little reluctant to risk the turnover, which could give Tom's River East the second score and break the game open. Duckworth, the quarterback, has been alternating with Shea. He keeps, and he had some blockers, but East defenders just stacked it right up. Managed to get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard gain on the play. And Infani made the stop, number 38. Also up there was Yatesy from the right side of the uh, Raider defense. Injury and on a play. Schiavo also came up to help, and you could see the East defense that time just, just swarm all over the ball carry. Okay, this has been a very physical game. While it, 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 there has been a little bit of sloppiness at times, uh, you have to wonder if the teams have been that sloppy or just hitting each other that hard. It is cold out there, and uh, they, they've been really pounding each other. Duckworth, the quarterback who kept the ball, is the one who is still down on the field, and it looks like they're working on his leg. Would you like to know what's happening up at Brick, Ken? Yes, I would. We're just starting right now. We're going to have a long delay here. 29 seconds on the scoreboard left in this quarter. And <coughs> He's getting up, Ken. He may have just had a bad cramp or something because it looks like they're applying pressure to his leg and he seems to be walking fine now. Of course, when everybody watches this broadcast, they're going to know who, who won that football game. And know, of course, they won't know until probably Monday when they'll announce in the papers as to where we will be going next week for that South Jersey Group 4 championship game. I have an idea the coaches will know by the time this game airs. They'll know where they're going. I know where we'd like to go. <laughs> and we hope we're going on a parkway up north. Tip and arrow. And... There's Chevrier, who we talked about earlier in the broadcast, who makes those great open field tackles. And that's going to run out the third quarter. Chevrier has got to be one of the best open field tacklers I've ever seen. He comes up with no hesitance, and he sticks that shoulder solidly into the ball carrier. He makes those knifing kind of sharp, crisp tackles. That's the end of the third quarter with a score. Tom's a Reese 7, Brick Memorial nothing. The third quarter came your way today by the New Jersey National Bank, along with Carolina Furniture, Service Star Hardware, and Gem Furniture. We'll be right back. The uh, last quarter is going to come your way by the New Jersey National Bank, along with the House of Paneling, Richards Motor South, and Carolina Furniture. As Memorial kicks the ball away to start the last quarter in a very high sailing punt, then takes a Tom Zarese bounce upfield and is covered and down by the Mustangs, and the Raiders go back on offense. That kick was over 40 yards from the line of scrimmage, Kent, and it was a towering kick. But we had an East uh, defense almost get into the block. So we're into the last quarter here, and we've had a defensive ball game. As Tom's over East, the only touchdown came on the 16-yard pass and scrambled by Joe Scott to Adam Glantzman in the second period. And there goes Slevin, picking up about five yards. Four East on the first play from scrimmage. I was just talking to uh, Chuck Potter, who's a soccer coach here at East, and on halftime, of course, Bill Lundy mentioned the great job the soccer team did this year, along with the gymnastics team at East, and of course, they won the South Jersey Championship, and uh, Chuck felt they made some mistakes 
that really cost them at Hamilton East in the state semifinals, and they might have had a chance to go further. Here's Scott rolling, and uh, two Mustangs come up to push him down. Herb Hune, the cornerback uh, on the uh, right side, made the contact with Scott. And it's going to bring up a third down and about four, maybe five to go here. And uh, Times of East really having their hands full with this improved Brick Memorial team that came in here with nothing to lose and everything to gain and has been sky high from the start of this ball game, especially on defense. Third down play for Scott. He sends Sherelle in motion. Fumble. Let's see who's on it. Memorial's going to come up with a football at the Raider 45. And the man who got it was the monster back, Jeff Munster. Has enough place to capitalize on the break. All right, here goes Rick Memorial on offense. Big break here for the Mustangs. And the Raider fans are starting to holler defense. Shea, the quarterback, throwing and almost completed. He threw into a crowd. Shirella was there to help break it up along with Scott. Also, uh, Yatey back there. Now here they're talking to East, and I think we're going to have a penalty coming up against uh, the Mustangs as they talk to the defensive captain, Schultz. Well, we got a chance here. We have Dave Solt, the uh, trainer of, of uh, Times of East here. Dave uh, missed the last ball game, and uh, Bob, we went into the the uh, athletic director's office, all the coaches were on the phone, and this is the gentleman they were talking to who was hospitalized, and he just got home for Thanksgiving. How do you feel, Dave? Oh, a lot better. It's good to be uh, back and watching this ball game today. Dave, uh, the coaches, I guess, kept you informed of what was going on because we saw them all talking to you, and they, uh, they all wanted to call you immediately after that game last week with Southern and, and see how you were doing and give you some details. And if you want to say anything to all your fans, all their friends and all the fans here at Tom's of Reese is your chance. Well, I'd just like to say thank you for all the support I got while I was in the hospital and all the cards and letters, and uh, it's good to be here today. Okay, Dave, good to have you back. And this is the Memorial Mustangs draw play, which is not fooling East one bit. The tackle was made by McKelvey, and uh, Schultz was in there on the fullback. And they stack it up. What we've seen, Ken, is neither team able to capitalize on the opportunities they've been given, except for the one time he scored just before the end of the first half. Third, very long yardage. They gotta go half the length of the football field for his first down. So Shea wants to throw, but he doesn't have a chance at all. He dumps it off. We may have grounding on that one. I don't see the flag, Bob, but the Raiders really put the heat on. And leading the charge was Jim Verderosa. The Raiders swarmed all over the quarterback there, and there was no receiver there. And I think the officials really made a mistake there, not calling the ground. And there was no receiver within 10 yards of the ball. Well, the Re East fans don't like it one bit. They are voicing their opinion. And uh, no doubt about it that uh, Shea just dumped that football off to get rid of it. There wasn't a receiver anywhere near where he threw that football. So. They're still going to have to punt the ball. And Ramsey gets it off high, very high. Garrity going backwards, fumbles the ball, picks it up. And it's a t just tackled immediately. Good coverage by Dan Boyle. That's going to push East back. Nice punt by Ramsey. That punt covered almost 50 yards. Ramsey does uh, all the things you tell a kicker to do wrong. He lets the ball go up high, he stands up straight, but he's got such a high leg, he just a uh, powerful leg, he just drills the ball. So the East Raiders have a long way to go here as they go on offense, leading 7-0 the clock. 
continuing to run here. Eight minutes and 30 seconds left in this football game. This is a rough assignment for East to come into this game in between playoff games. Stacked up in the backfield. Look at the fired up Memorial defenses. They hit Slevin, and they are so sky high. It's unbelievable. That tackle was made by Walski. He made a good, uh, hard uh, charge that time on the blitz, and he just come up and really nailed the ball carrier. Walski, the 5'10", 170-pound senior, strong side linebacker. So he's pushed back now to the 8-yard line, and into the game comes Glenn Clark with a play from George Jack. Schiava will come out. Raiders huddling in their end zone. Schultz leads them up. Blenny splits to the near side. Blink to the right. Shirella goes in motion. And here comes the pressure. Scott avoids it nicely. Hits Blenny and he steps out of bounds. Nice play by Scott. It was an excellent play. Joe Scott has been the uh, sole offensive star this afternoon uh, for the Raiders. And the ball comes out there where they have a shot at the first down now. All the Raiders standing along the sideline. Rick Memorial standing across the way. In comes Schiavo. The team you're going to have to watch for. Donnie Reed's Mustangs of Brick Memorial come a long way after last year's rough start. As I said on the pregame show, they had to the split sessions and practicing late at night, sharing the same field at Brick Township. This year, things are different. They've got their own school and uh, having a good year. Here goes Slevin, and he is tackled by Don Warren, and he'll pick up the first down for Tom's River East. Now, George Jack would like to see a nice drive here, not only to help try to clinch this ball game, but eat up the last seven minutes of this football game. I don't, care, I don't know how true it is, but I understand that uh, Panuska, if he had not been a senior, if they had split a little bit earlier, Panuska would be playing uh, with Brick Memorial. What a difference he could make in that ball club. And we heard from some irate Memorial fans when we did the Central Regional Brick Township game last year over Brick. They came down to us to tell us that Panuska should have been over playing with them. Here goes uh, Shirella. And Shirella picks up a few yards up the mi uh, middle as then he tried to cut it to the outside. And on the stop was Mike Murata, the weak side linebacker. And he had some help from his friends. So East will have a that's six yards to go on second down. George Jack continues to shuffle those players in and out with the plays. Schiava getting in there late. Gets to play as they break the huddle. Here's the double handoff as Shirella on the reverse goes nowhere. Again, the tackle was made by number 87, Walski. Walski's been having a great afternoon this afternoon for the Mustangs. They lost yardage. He's going to bring up a third and eight. Lost a yard on a play. And McKelvey is the last one on the field now as he comes in, replacing Glantzman at tight end. Jack Bush pacing the sidelines down there, not too happy with what's going on. Scott wants to throw. Right down the middle, he's got his tight end, McKelvey. And I believe McKelvey is going to be just short of a first down. He was tackled immediately by Herb Hune. Bernie Rosa was a little shook, uh, shaken up on that play, but again, it was excellent execution by Scott. McKelvey broke over the middle and uh, was close to the first down, but I think he's going to be about a foot short. Joe Scott's going to go up and watch this uh, measurement. He's requesting the measurement, so Scott and Schultz take a look at it. You may have it. Uh, just, oh, wow, about an inch short. Scott signaling the coach check. The distance needed. And here's all the coaches in the stands telling George to go for it. This is a damned if you do and damned if you don't situation. If he goes for it and makes it, he's a hero. If he doesn't, he's in trouble. The fans are hollering go, and uh, I think Coach Jack is going to go. He's sending in a play. They're all pushing their buttons, yes, on the computerized coaching box. And <laughs> let's see what happens. 
Coach Jackman is going to elect to go, but I would kick away here and play with the defense. Here they go. Scott, quarterback sneak, and I think he has it. But he loses the football now. now. Apparently, I saw the Mustangs clapping there. I thought maybe they'd come up with a loose football. But apparently, they think they pushed them back. Now, let's see. I thought Scott went forward and got the first down. That ball is very, very close, uh, and uh, this is a very risky call because I would have elected to kick away and put them downfield and play 80 yards from my goal line with a 7-0 lead. Uh, it's more important that you, you win the ball game than it is to, to give them the opportunity there. But it looks like the Raiders have uh, made the first down. Scott was kneeling down right over, taking a good look, and he says, hey, we got the first down. So here go the, the Raiders, and they just made it by just about the distance they needed, about an inch. So clock continues to run, under five minutes now left in this ball game. And the Raiders, by getting that first down, can run a lot more time off that clock as they lead seven to nothing in a very tough football game as the Mustangs came in here ready to play today, giving uh, the Raiders one heck of a ball game. Straight ahead they go, wedge them out and get, gain a few yards. Herb Hugh in the corner comes up to make the stop on Slevin. And they'll have second and six. Raiders is very slow now, moving in and out of the huddle, and they want to do that. They want to use up as much of the clock as they need. There's no reason for them to hurry. They have a 7-0 lead. Scott rolling to the near side. He's hit as he throws a wobbly pass to Glassman. Deflected into his hands. I think he's... No. Finally saw the ball pop out. I almost thought he made a great catch. Again, Scott was under good pressure, but he got the ball off. Glansman was out there. The ball was batted back and forth to the defensive back in Glansman. And when they hit the ground, the ball popped loose. Here's a replay, Bob. All right, here you can watch the replay. Scott comes out, doesn't see the defender coming from the blind side. The ball is somewhat wobbly. If he didn't get hit, the ball would have had enough on it and it would have been completed and could have been a touchdown. Ray Rossi, the free safety, number 88, deflected that football right towards Glansman. He almost made the reception. So again, brings up the third and sixth to go, possibly seven, and again, that clock is stopped on that incompletion with three minutes and 50 seconds left in this football game. Slevin goes in motion to the far side. Scott pop pass over the middle, intended for McKelvey, incomplete. All right, there was motion that time to try and make the defense move. McKelvey was open over the middle, but the ball was thrown a little bit low. The only score in the game so far, Ken, came with 11 seconds to go in the second quarter on a 16-yard. A nice punt from uh, Yatesy. And he sends it down. Nobody back for uh, Brick Memorial. He sends it. I guess they didn't want to believe it, and uh, he sends it down to the 27-yard line. Yeah, Brick Memorial, whether they didn't score to go in the ball game. Shea to throw, screen, tip and arrows, and wow, is he stacked up. Berta Rosa broke up that screen pass. Big Jim stacks up tip and arrow. As they started to establish the wall for the screen, Berta Rosa read it and drifted out there with it, and as soon as the ball was thrown, he just creamed the ball carrier. There's a shot of the scoreboard. Clock running. And yeah, we're going to have to start thinking about an outstanding player of this ball game. Of course, uh, we still got 242, and anything can happen here. If Memorial strikes long, goes for two point conversion, they can pull this ball game out. Shea is the quarterback once again. McKelvich coming in on a pressure. Incomplete at the 45 yard line. Yatesy was covering on the play. Uh, a ball was in and out of the hands of the receiver that time, Mark Gaspich. It was delivered to him. He bobbled it, but couldn't hold it when he went to the ground. Here's the replay. Gaspich has it. He was open there, and he bobbled the ball and was unable to hold it. It would have been a big play. Clock stops, 2.23 left in the game. I'm surprised Gaspich in a prevent situation was so open here. Somebody had to blow a defensive signal because he was wide open on that sideline.
draw, uh, draw to the tailback, tip and arrow. And the Raiders gang tackling. That'll bring up a fourth down situation in about 10, Ken. But with the clock winding down around a two-minute mark, uh, it's a good time for a fake kick, or you may not even see them fake kick. You may see them elect to go for it anyhow. Under two minutes. So it's up to the Raider defense now to protect this lead. And the official calls Tom's over East timeout. So Ed Sarluka wants to talk about his defense, apparently. Ken, with 1.45 to go here, if I was on defense, uh, I'd just play straight. If Brick wants to kick the ball or something like that, let it go, because if you get the ball, you'll kill the clock. You have to play to stop the first down and uh, take the chances on what happens deep. East Ban starts to play here during a timeout. There's two ways to play in this situation on a 4th and 11. You know they're going to go for it. Uh, either you blitz and you try and get the quarterback before he gets it off, or you keep everybody back and play for the interception so that they don't get the, or, or keep them from getting the big play so they don't get the first down. Looking across the way, it's easy to see where all the Brick fans are today, Bob. They're all over at uh, Brick and uh, Millville, which I guess is understandable. It's a shame, too, because the Mustangs have a good ball club. They've played an excellent game here today, and had it not been for the one big play, this would be a nothing-nothing tie going into the last two minutes of play. The uh, Brick Memorial kids deserve more support than this. And Donnie Reed's got to be very happy. If his club can play with a, a team like Tom's River East, he's got to be uh, very pleased with the way uh, the season has developed for uh, Memorial in their second year of football. Slot to the right, eye formation. Shea dropping deep, and here's Slevin putting the heat on. Shea running for his life, and he is really decked. Loose football, Verna Rosa has it, and Sigler is the man who caused the fumble. Uh, great job by Chris Sigler. Sig uh, the quarterback avoided a rush. There was a blitz on. We said earlier that there were two ways to play it. Coach Jack never being conservative, went with the aggressive way to make things happen. Siegler jarred the ball loose on a hit, and a beast ball down close in the goal line. Here's the replay. Here you can see the great shot by Siegler, and the ball just pops loose, and Verderosa falls on it. And uh, he tries to advance it, but you can't do that in high school football. And let's see what East can do here if they can capitalize on a break. First and goal from the seven. And there's a big hole for Slevin. Slevin's in for a touchdown. Seven-yard scoring run. That should wrap it up with 107 left to play in the football game. So East didn't waste any time capitalizing on the fumble recovery by Jim Verderosa caused by Sigler. Here's a replay, Bob. Right here, you can watch it. Just a simple handoff to Slevin. He gets in there, breaks the tackle, and powers into the end zone. Went right over Herb Hune, who had him by the leg, and uh, Slevin refused to go down until he got into that end zone. There's the story on the scoreboard as Jim Verderosa will attempt the 14th point. Gets it up, and it's good. And Tom's of East leads over Brick Memorial, 14-0 with... One minute and seven seconds left in this football game. Ken, all year we've talked about this East football team and how physical they are. And a good football team makes its own breaks. And here you can see that they've got two scores on two breaks that they made on turnovers. It was a great hit there by Siegler, which set up that touchdown. And you have a team that came into the game flat against a team that was very much up for the game. But being a great football team that they are, they made the big play when they had to. So now we got to think about that player of the game, Bob. I'll tell you, one player we've been overlooking all year is, is, is right here, and he's played another good game today, is Chevrier. And, well, Scott made that unbelievable improvis what would you call it, improvising on the, uh, the heat of the pass rush and throwing that unbelievable scoring strike early in the game. Well, Kenny, you know, Scott has been great uh, all game. This is probably the best we've seen him play, and he's been the spark in the offense. But Chevrier has made one outstanding tackle after the other all season long and contained other teams. Uh, I, I think maybe we have to go with Chevrier today. 
All right, so we're going to name Bob Chevrier as a uh, standout player of the game for Times of East, as he's been all year long. Here's the return, and a good return, and watch out. And the kicker makes the tackle, Alan Gerber, and he was the last man over there. Bob, that could have gone all the way. Yeah, he almost broke it. I think East relaxed a little bit, figuring the game was put away, and there's a little bit of time left, and uh, everybody kind of waited for somebody else to do the job, and he almost broke that for a touchdown. Dan Boyle was the man returning that kickoff, and uh, that was pretty close. 14 to nothing, 50 seconds clock running. Here's Shea, going down this far sideline. Garrity was over there, sailed over his head, over both the receiver and Garrity, incomplete. East is in a prevent version of their own defense. They've backed their three defensive backs to 12 to 15 yards off the ball, and Garrity almost picked that off. Thirty-seven seconds, clock stop, left in this football game. And don't forget to be with us as we go wherever the East goes for that championship game. Three possible sites, and you can read it in your paper next week. We'll either be at Brick Township High School, Giant Stadium, or right here if it should be Millville in the final. Here's an incompleted pass. Thirty-four seconds. Bob Chevrier, our player of the game, and we kind of overlooked him earlier in the season, but he's been brilliant, and the coaches are very high on him. Just makes tremendous uh, open field tackles. Chevrier is one of the best open field tacklers Ken I've ever seen, and uh, he's impressed me tremendously. Not only does he make the tackle, but the tackle is always crisp and clean with perfect form, and it's always on a big play. That East defense has been really unbelievable all year long as Southern Regional will tell you. And they're, as of right now, have another shutout in the works. You can hear the fans screaming that they want to get Wolf and Brick next week. And I think that was the story here today. The team was a little bit flat, but their defense has kept them alive all season long. And their defense today did the job for them as they were able to shut out Brick Memorial, at least up until this point. Of course, a lot of people wanted to get Warren Wolf. It doesn't always work out that way too often. It, come out on top of Warren Wolf, but it should be a great matchup if the Brick does win today. When you're king of the hill, everybody wants to knock you off. We saw a great game over Brick. East only lost this year or in the season, but East has come a long way since that football game, although I'm sure Brick has improved also, but I think East has made the greater strides. Brick was already a super football team when they started the season, and uh, East has just been getting better and better and better. Third down play, here goes Shea, putting it up for grabs, trying to hit Boyle, incomplete. And Shea is on the ground, Slevin got to the quarterback. Rick Memorial lined up every eligible receiver, plus a few more, sent five people flying down the field on one side of the field. I think there's a flag, I think there were too many people on the line of scrimmage. We have 29 seconds left in the football game, and going to have a penalty here. They're still yelling, we want Wolf down here. Are you lost? If you want Warren Wolf, you can't holler about it. you got to kind of sneak in and catch him by surprise. Don't give him too much of a warning to get ready for you. The Silver Fox will be ready. Where did Wolf get the name of Silver Fox? It's very apropos. Where did he get it from? Ken? I don't know. I have no idea. I just know it's been around for a long time. Of course, he's always had the, the silver hair since I can remember. And uh, somebody gave him that name. It might have been Signorino. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, Ronnie certainly would have enough reason to give it to him. They locked the horns in enough of battles together. Well, we have another timeout here. Bob's going to head down.
Now we're finally ready to resume play. Here's a shotgun. Shea to Boyle. Boyle's got some blockers. And Boyle's finally stopped at the 40 yard line. Out of bounds. Stops the clock with 27 seconds to go. First down for the Mustangs. Again, the shotgun. Hands off to the fullback. Fullback's got a huge hole, and he's all the way down inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line. I should say to the 20-yard line, and that's going to leave 20 seconds on the clock. And again, Memorial takes the timeout. They're trying to avoid the shutout here. Gas pitch was the ball carrier. So again, uh, as usual, those last two minutes take a long time to complete with the incompletions and the timeouts and uh, still have 20 seconds to go. Bob Chevrier is the player of the game for Tom's River East and he'll receive a plaque from Clear Television. Stranger down the sidelines right now waiting to get our player of the game. Any official says, let's go. And we still got time for a couple more plays here. Shea, jump pass over the middle to Boyle. Boyles has it. And Boyles down to the 10. And they quickly run up to the line of scrimmage. Clock continues to running, 10 seconds. Now they'll stop the clock to move the uh, markers in place. Nine seconds left as they move those chains. Rick wants the touchdown before this game ends. Shotgun again, Shea throws the boy off the sideline and he's out of bounds. Garrity makes the stop, four seconds left. Was on the 10. He only got about a yard on Hello. the uh, completion. The main thing they were trying to do was stop that clock. Now they have a chance to talk it over, and here they go with a possibly the last play of the ball game. Slot right. Here's Shea. McKelvey in there, and he gets it off with McKelvey hitting him. Complete the ball, and that should do it. Tom Zarese gets the shutout. The final score. The Toms of East Raiders 14, the Brick Memorial Mustangs nothing. Toms of East now 9-1 in on a year. Brick Memorial finishes 4-5, and five, but a very good season as Donnie Reed's team comes a long way. The last quarter came your way by the New Jersey National Bank, along with the House of Paneling, Richards Motor South, and Carolina Furniture.